Hey everyone, I'm Julia and I'm going to be guiding you through a strengthening yoga practice today. So begin by grabbing any props or items you think you might want to use such as a pillow or a blanket in order to make the practice more accessible or more comfortable for you. And once you've grabbed those things, we'll go ahead and get started on our backs. And so you can actually use the pillow on your, under your head or under the knees. Just lying flat on your back. You might like it better bringing the soles of the feet onto the mat, letting the knees fall inward, or bringing the soles of the feet together and allowing the knees to fall open to either side. So just decide what feels good for you here and then begin to settle in. Bringing our awareness to our breath, Inhaling through the nose, filling up the belly, the chest, the rib cage, the throat, and exhaling to slowly release it, letting it all go. Moving into this pranayama, these controlled breathing practices. It's important that during times of fear, that we focus on the things that we do have control over. And our breath is always one of those things. If you have an ujjayi breath in your practice, perhaps you begin to move into that. Ujjayi is where we constrict the muscles on the back of the throat on the exhale to create a sound. It's a very warming, powerful breath. Continuing to breathe here, finding stillness in the body, just allowing the breath to find movement and fluidity. Expanding on every inhale, releasing on every exhale. Begin to Find some movement here, awakening the body, moving any props that you may have been using away from you. Go ahead and plant the soles of the feet onto the mat so that the knees point up towards the sky, keeping the forearms flat against the mat, the shoulders flat against the mat. Inhale to lift the hips up to the sky for bridge pose, keeping the neck stable and neutral. Lifting through the thighs and the hips, keeping the knees, hips distance apart. On an exhale, slowly lowering the hips back down to the mat, one vertebrae at a time. The tailbone comes last. This time, inhaling to lift the hips up to the sky for bridge pose, and then maybe you lift the right leg up as well. Perhaps placing that right ankle above the left knee. Exhaling to slowly lower the hips back down to the mat. And then bringing that left knee and right ankle in towards the chest, keeping the right foot flexed to protect the knee. And then maybe you decide to straighten this left leg to roll into the ankle. Maybe you keep it bent and just rock side to side. Or maybe you just keep that left foot completely flat against the mat, maybe this is enough sensation for you. Always listening to your body. And when you're ready, go ahead and plant the left foot down, plant the right foot down, arms come down by our sides. Inhale to lift the hips up towards the sky. Exhale, or sorry. And maybe we lift that left foot up to the sky as well. Perhaps we cross that left ankle above the right knee, sinking the hips down one vertebrae at a time. And then maybe we bring that right knee and left ankle in towards the chest to create a stretch in that left hip flexor and then move and explore in any way that feels good in your body. And breathing into this space. Begin to plant the right foot down, 
Plant the left foot down. And then go ahead and bring the hands to the back of the neck and the head, the fingertips cradling the back of the head. The thumbs are maybe in the neck and maybe you give yourself a nice massage, just circling the thumbs into the back of the neck, releasing any tension that you may be carrying there. Knowing that just by bringing our awareness to tension, we're already beginning to release it. When we can identify imbalance, we're already working towards balance. And when you're ready, on an exhale, lifting the shoulders, squeezing the core, just coming into a crunch, inhaling to lower the shoulders back down to the mat. And then just moving with the pace of our own breath, exhales, lift the shoulders, inhales, lower the shoulders back down. And just go with your own breath at your own rhythm. Focusing more on quality over quantity. Keeping the elbows wide and supporting the head and neck with the hands. Noticing that perhaps moving slowly with these crunches is even more challenging than it would be to move quicker. Feeling the core beginning to fire up and building heat there. Activating that third chakra, that space of power and autonomy. Knowing that everything you need is already within you. Go ahead and find stillness here. Bring the arms next to your sides. We'll take one more bridge pose. Inhaling to lift the hips up towards the sky. Countering those crunches. Maybe you even interlace the fingers underneath your seat and roll the shoulders underneath the chest. Bringing the fists together, the heels of the hands together. Breathing expansively into that heart space. And then slowly releasing one vertebrae at a time. Tailbone comes last. Bringing the knees into the chest. Rocking side to side. Stretching out that lower back. Begin to rock forwards and backwards until you gain the momentum to find a seated position. And then we'll meet there in seated. Rooting down through the sit bones, sitting up tall through the spine. Inhale, circles the arms around and up to the sky. Exhale, brings the hands down through heart center, bowing the chin. Taking a moment here to set our intention for our practice today. Or perhaps you borrow my intention. The intention I've been working with for some time now is remember your power, remember your light. And then go ahead and reach the hands back up to the sky in this prayer position. And exhale to release the hands, sending that intention out into the universe. And then just make your way to hands and knees, a position of all fours, stacking shoulders above the wrists, hips above the knees, and we'll begin to move through cat cows. Inhaling to lift the crown of the head, lift the tailbone. Exhaling to round the spine. Tuck the chin into the chest and tuck the tailbone underneath, adding any fluidity or organic movements that feel good here in your body. And making these cat cows your own. Maybe you begin to rock forwards and backwards or in a circular motion, ironing out any areas of tension and just sending your breath to those places. Taking inventory of where you are holding tension. You have to know what you're holding on to in order to know what to let go of. When you're ready, rocking the shoulders forward to a kneeling plank position, the shoulders stacking above the wrists. On an exhale, Lowering all the way down to the belly. 
moving the hands back slightly so that they're under the elbows. And then inhaling to lift the chest for Cobra, pinching the shoulder blades together, reaching forward through the crown of the head. Staying relaxed in the glutes and in the legs and just allowing the strength in our back to do the work. Exhale to lower the chest back down to the earth, place the hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale to rise to a kneeling plank position. And exhale to sit back. Child's Pose, Balasana. Maybe bringing the arms next to your sides or keeping them long out in front of you. Maybe you rest your forehead down against the mat and move the head side to side, massaging into that third eye space. Your third eye is your center of intuition. It's your inner guide. And so listening to that inner guide as we move through this practice, since you're at home, and I'm not there to be with you. You kind of have the responsibility to trust your body, to trust the practice, trust in the universe. Know that also you can always return to child's pose at any time during this practice if it becomes too intense or you need to come back to your intention or reestablish your breath. And from here, shifting the shoulders forward, let's tuck the toes and lift the hips for downward facing dog, finding movement here. Pedaling the feet, maybe coming up onto the toes, maybe bending through the knees. Strong here, pressing into the hands, into the knuckles, and focusing most of our weight on the pointer fingers and the thumbs. Dropping the weight of the head and neck, and letting it all go. And then when you're ready, bend the knees, look between the hands. And just make your way to forward fold, getting there in any way that makes sense to you. When you arrive, lift halfway for a flattish back. Shoulder blades pinched together, the hands might come to the knees or the thighs. And on an exhale, go ahead and fold back in, releasing the weight of the head and neck. Maybe you sway side to side or walk the fingertips side to side, sort of swinging your hips along with it. Finding some mobility and movement here in the spine, keeping the shoulders lifted up and away from the ears. And then when you're ready, finding stillness through center, press down through the feet and inhale to circle the arms around and up to the sky, bending through the knees as you do so, reaching up to the top when you get there. Stretching long and tall, getting big. And then on an exhale, hands come through heart center. And then down to our sides. Inhale to circle the arms back around and up to the sky. Exhale, forward fold, wash it away. Inhale, halfway lift. Pinch the shoulder blades, straighten the spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step walk or jump the feet back to plank pose. This time you might be in a full plank, or maybe you stick with that kneeling plank where the knees are down against the earth. Wherever you're at, just kind of feeling for where the shoulders are at in space. And so consider stacking the shoulders above the fingertips. And so you might even rock the toes forwards and backwards to feel for that sensation of where the shoulders are above. And so, rounding through the shoulders as well, as if we were in a cat pose. So imagine that if there were water spilled on your back right now, none of it could pool in the shoulders because it is so rounded and lifted and broadened there. And we're pressing up and out of the wrists, reaching through the crown of the head. And then on an exhale, bend the elbows, lower down for chaturanga. Elbows stay tight to our body. Maybe you stop halfway, maybe you come all the way. Tops of the feet press down. Inhale, lifts the heart up and through for upward facing dog. If you're an upward dog, only points of connection are the tops of the feet and the hands. And then the heart shines up and through, opening that space even beyond the biceps. And then on an exhale, tuck the toes, lift the hips, press back for downward facing dog and breathe here for three to five breaths. 
we just went through our first sun salutation. And I will guide you through two more. It will be exactly the same. So if you already know the flow, you already know sun salutation, you can go with the pace of your own breath. Otherwise, I'm still here to guide you through it. When you're ready, bend the knees, look between the hands, step walker, jump the feet forward, forward full, top of the mat, halfway lift, exhale to sink back in. Inhale, root to rise, sweep the arms up, get big, and then exhale, hands come down through heart center, samasthi to he, hands come down to our sides, inhale, lifts the arms back, around and up, exhale, forward fold, wash it away. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step walker, jump the feet back. Plank pose, top of a push up, lower down, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Tops of the feet press down. Inhale, shines the heart up and through, up dog or cobra. Exhale, tucks the toes, lifts the hips for downward dog or just presses back to child's pose. Decide which resting pose and know that you can change your mind between rounds of sun salutation. It doesn't always have to be exactly the same way. In fact, you should treat it as a new experience because with every experience, we, be we become a, a more authentic version of ourselves. So with every pose, consider it an opportunity to find the most authentic version of you in that particular moment. When you're ready, bend the knees, look between the hands, step walker, jump the feet through, forward fold, halfway lift. Inhaling, exhaling as we fold back in. Inhaling as we press to standing. Exhale, hands come to our heart. Reconnect to our intention. Hands come down to our sides. Inhale, lifts the arms back around and up. Exhale, forward fold. Hinge at the hips, lead with the heart. Wash it away. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. Step walker, jump the feet back. Plank pose, top of a push up, and lower down. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Your version. Take three breaths here, and then we'll add on to our flow. Finding that stillness, and reconnecting with your breath. Remembering that the breath is the most important thing. When you're ready, anchor down through the left foot. Inhale to lift that right leg up to the sky for three-legged dog. If it's available and feels good, you can bend that right knee and twist open, stacking the right hip above the left, keeping equal weight in the hands, really pressing down through the hands, through the um, pointer fingers and thumbs. Inhale to straighten that right leg, three-legged dog, lifting through that right heel, pressing it towards the back wall of whatever space you're in. And then on an exhale, sweeping that right knee in towards the nose and shifting the weight forward, sort of like a plank pose. So knee to nose, chin curls into the chest, Inhale to straighten the right leg, press it back towards the back wall. On an exhale, bringing the right knee to the right elbow. Maybe it just comes near it, maybe it gives it a tap. Inhaling, right foot presses back up towards the sky. Exhale, right knee, left elbow, cross the body. Maybe it just goes in that general direction, maybe it gives it a tap. Inhale, presses the right foot back up towards the sky. Exhale, steps the right foot between the hands. When you're ready, adjust your stance, and then inhale, warrior two. For warrior two, pressing down through the feet as if we're spreading the mat apart. The right knee stacks above the right ankle. We're pressing down through the outer edge of that left foot, and the fingers are reaching in either direction. We're Feeling that energy draw upwards as the belly button hugs the spine and we're tightening our left glute. The gaze or 
our drishti, our focal point, is past the right fingertips. Inhale, reach forward, flip the right palm so that it faces up towards the sky, and then exhale, reverse warrior. And so the stance doesn't really change, we're still pressing down through the feet and lunging through that right knee, reaching through the right fingertips to create a side body stretch all along that right side body. And then on an exhale, go ahead and lower that right forearm down to the right thigh for side angle pose. And keeping in mind that we don't want to dump our weight into this right thigh, it's really just more there for balance and stability. So if you feel tempted to dump all that weight into the um, thigh, consider lifting the arm away from the thigh so that we have to use our core, hug the belly button to the spine. And make any adjustments that you need and then on an exhale, reaching that left hand forward, circling it down and around. Inhale as the hand comes back up to the sky. Exhaling as it comes down and around. Inhaling, left hand comes up to the sky. Strong stance still, you guys. Exhale, lower the hand back down towards the earth. Inhale, circle it back up. Exhale, come back through center to warrior two. Inhale, straighten the right leg, grab that right wrist with the left hand. Sky archer pose. So we take a side bend here, and then exhale to cartwheel the right hands to surround the right foot. Low lunge. On an inhale, lift the right hand up to the sky, drag and fly twist. The right wrist stacks above the right shoulder, stacks above the left shoulder, stacks above the left wrist to create one strong vertical line of energy. Exhale, plant that right hand down against the mat, step the right foot back to meet the left, and you can move through your vinyasa flow if you would like to, or you can certainly skip it. Inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. So the reason we have the vinyasa flows is so that we can create heat in the body. But some of you might already have enough heat and sensation, so doing another vinyasa could be unnecessary. Inhale, lift the left leg. Maybe bend the left knee, stacking the left hip above the right hip, twisting open, equal weight in the hands. On an inhale, straightening the left leg, pressing back through the left heel, strong through our hands and arms, up and out of the wrists, out of the shoulders, and then exhale, bending the left knee, bringing it in towards the nose, curling the chin to chest, and shifting our weight to stack above the fingertips here, as if we were in plank pose. Inhale to press the left foot back up towards the sky. Exhale. Left knee, left elbow, shifting our weight forward. Maybe tapping the knee to the elbow. Inhale, pressing the left foot back up towards the sky. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, comes across the body. Inhale, straightening the left leg for three-legged dog. Then exhale, stepping the left foot between the hands. Even if you have to pick up the foot and put it there, adjust however you need to. And on an inhale, rising up to warrior two. Again, for warrior two, pressing down through the feet, drawing that energy upward, up into the core and out through the fingertips, gazes over the left fingertips. On an inhale, reach forward, flip the palm, exhale, reverse warrior, reaching straight up to the sky through the left fingertips. Option to wrap the right arm around the lower back to create more of a twist here. On an exhale, bringing the arms back to a T for warrior two, and then lowering the left forearm down to the left thigh for side angle, right fingertips reaching straight up to the sky, option to lift this forearm up and away from the thigh, and sinking through our hips, exhale as we drop the right fingertips forward and down towards the earth in a circular motion, inhale to lift back around and up, Exhale to circle the fingertips downwards, forward and down. Inhale back up. One more round, moving with our breath, exhaling the fingers circle down to the earth. Inhale, lifts that right hand back up to the sky. 
Go ahead and come through center, warrior two. Straightening that left knee, reaching the arms up. Exhale, side bend to the right. Sky archer pose. It's okay for the hips to be a bit skewed here. It might feel good for the right hip to pop up a little higher than the left. Gently exhale to surround that left foot with the hands. Inhale, lifting the left fingertips up to the sky. And keeping most of our weight in our left foot, not so much in our right hand. Taking that weight out of that hand so that it's just mostly there for balance and stability. Exhale, plant the left hand back down to the earth. Step the left foot back to meet the right for plank. Option to move through that vinyasa flow, or maybe you decide to skip it. Up to you. When you're ready, bending through the knees, look between the hands, make your way to a forward fold. Halfway lift when you get there. Exhale to fold back in. Inhale. Root to rise, sweep the arms up. And on an exhale, sinking the hips back for chair pose, Utkatasana. And so our weight comes to our heels as if we could lift all 10 toes. The shoulders stay back and relax. Tailbone is slightly tucked. The knees might connect, the big toes might connect. You'll decide what feels good for you here. It's kind of an awkward pose. When you're ready, shift the weight forward so that the weight comes to the toes and we can lift the heels away from the earth, balancing just on the ball mounds of the feet. And then exhale to slowly sink the hips down, maybe all the way down so that the hips are sitting on the heels. And then maybe you bring the hands down to the mat just for a little yogi squat. Maybe you stay here with the knees together, or maybe you keep the feet together and separate the knees, keeping the heels lifted. Maybe you walk the feet out a little bit, stacking the knees more so above the ankles, and then bringing the hands to heart center, just to open the knees further with the elbows. So decide what version you want to take here, if any. And then when you're ready, go ahead and heel toe the feet back together, forward fold. Halfway lift on an inhale. Exhale to sink back in, plant the hands. Step walker, jump the feet back to plank pose. Maybe you go for that vinyasa flow. Maybe you skip it and meet me in downward facing dog. On an inhale, lift the right leg, three-legged dog. Exhale to bend that right knee, stack the hips, twist open. Inhale, straightening the right leg, square off the hips. Exhale, knee to nose, curl everything in. Inhale, inhale presses the right foot back up towards the sky. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale to lift the foot. Exhale, right knee, left elbow comes across the body. Inhale to lift the foot, three-legged dog. Exhale, steps the foot between the hands. Low lunge, adjust your stance. Inhale, warrior two. Reach forward, flip the palm. Exhale, reverse warrior. Reaching straight up to the sky. Exhale, arms come through T, and then side angle pose, sinking through the hips. Right forearm finds the right thigh. Maybe the right hand comes down to the earth or a pillow, something of that nature. Exhale to circle the fingertips forward and down. Inhale as you lift the left fingertips back up. Exhale as they come down and around. Inhale to lift back up. Last time, exhale forward and down. Inhale to lift the fingertips through center. And then when you're ready, rising all the way up. Reaching up through the fingertips, grab the right wrist with the left hand, exhale. Side bend to the left, sky archer pose. And then when you're ready, releasing the grip. Reaching forward through those right fingertips and when you can't reach forward anymore, tilt down for triangle pose, trikonasana. 
And so this right hand might be on the right ankle or calf, something like that. Maybe you have it on a prop. Maybe you have the hand planted all the way to the earth. And our main focus here is to keep the chest open, so spiral it open. And if you would like some more sensation here, you can reach this left hand forward so that the bicep hovers above the ear. Breathing in whatever version of triangle pose that you're in. Acknowledging your strength, inviting in that sensation. And then when you're ready, rising all the way up to standing, go ahead and surround that right foot with the hands. Inhale to lift the right hand up to the sky, stacking the shoulders, twisting through the waist, pressing all of our weight into that left hand this time, and then stepping the right foot all the way back to side plank. You may decide to drop the left knee down first, and then take a kneeling side plank. Just listening to your body. When you're ready, lowering the right hand down, coming through plank pose, kneeling or otherwise, option to move through that vinyasa, or maybe you just skip it and take a resting pose. On an inhale, left leg lifts, three-legged duck. Exhale, bends the knee, stacks the hips to twist open. Inhale, straightens, squares the hips. Exhale, curls, knee to nose, shifts our weight forward. Inhale, left foot presses up towards the sky. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale to lift, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, cross the body. Keeping that left ankle tucked in towards the left glute. And then inhale to lift the left foot back up towards the sky. Exhale, steps it all the way through. Low lunge. Inhale, warrior two. Adjusting your stance, pressing down through the feet. Inhale to reach forward, flip the palm. Exhale, reverse warrior. Reaching straight up through the left fingertips, through the left side body, and then on an exhale, Lowering that left forearm down to the left thigh. Perhaps the hand lands on a prop or on the ground. Inhale here. Exhale as we circle that right arm down and around. Inhaling at the top. Exhaling down and around. Inhaling to lift. Exhaling to lower. Inhaling to lift, coming all the way up, straightening the left knee, grabbing the left wrist with the right hand, side bend to the right. Inhaling to release that side bend, arms come back to a T, reaching forward through the left fingertips, exhale, triangle pose, tilting down, trikonasana. This left hand might connect to the ankle or shin, it might plant next to the left foot or onto a pillow or prop. And then the gaze is up past the fingertips over that right shoulder. And then maybe you actually drop that right bicep to hover above the right ear. The gaze is still up at the sky. Breathing here, feeling your strength. Inhaling to rise back up to warrior two. Exhale to surround the left foot with the hands. Inhale to lift the left hand up to the sky, drag and fly, twist, rotate through the waist, stacking the shoulders, and then consider pressing into that right hand, stepping the left foot back to stack above the right foot, keeping both the feet flexed. Maybe you just step back to a kneeling plank, it's up to you and what feels good in your body. And then when you're ready, planting that left hand down, plank pose, option to move through that vinyasa, or to skip it and take your resting pose. When you're ready, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to sink in. 
Inhale, root to rise, sweep the arms up. Exhale, sit back, chair pose, Utkatasana. When you're ready, bring the weight in towards the ball mounds of the feet, lifting the heels, maybe squeezing the knees together, hugging the belly button in towards the spine. Slowly begin to sink the hips down to the earth, embracing the shake, you guys. It's a reminder that you're alive and you've made it this far. And then once you get all the way down, you might take a version of yogi squat, whatever version feels good. It can be the same one you did last time or a different one. Or maybe you decide to explore crow pose. So there's a couple different ways you can get into crow pose. Vakasana. And we'll start with the way where the, the toes are next to one another. So from the front, this is what it looks like. So the toes are next to each other. The heels are lifted, planting the hands down, and then lifting the hips up towards the sky. I want to keep my hips really high up to begin, just because it is such a big muscle there. It's heavy and it would make more sense to start with it lifted than to try and muscle it up afterwards. So then once we start from here, we can bring the knees towards the armpits, lifting the gaze so we're looking forward, all right? And then maybe we just lift one toe or one foot, maybe both. Maybe you balance here. Maybe you try it and you fall down and you realize that's why we practice on mats. And then when you're ready, maybe you shoot the feet back for chaturanga. Maybe you skip it entirely and just take your resting pose. So either vinyasa or take a rest. Then inhale, right leg lifts. Exhale, bends the knee, stacks the hips to twist open. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale, forward, or sorry, inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step the right foot between the hands. Inhale, warrior two. Reach forward, flip the palm, exhale, reverse warrior. Right fingertips reach straight up to the sky. Exhale, arms come to a T. Side angle pose, dropping the right forearm to the thigh or hand down to the earth or a prop. Exhale as we circle that left hand um, forward and down. Inhale as we lift the left hand back up towards the sky. Exhale as we circle it down and around. Inhale to lift, last round. Exhale, circling it down. Inhaling as we lift. And when you're ready, rising all the way up. Side, or sorry, sky archer pose. Grabbing the right wrist with the left hand. Side body stretched. Breathing into that right side body. Exhale to release. Reaching forward. Tilting down, triangle pose, trikonasana. Breathing here. Maybe lowering the bicep towards the ear. Inhaling, warrior two. Bend back into that right knee. And exhale to cartwheel the hands to surround this right foot. Inhale to lift the right hand up towards the sky. And this time it's going to be different. So listen carefully. Inhale to lift that left foot. And we're in a twisted balancing half moon. On an exhale, go ahead and lower that left hand down, or sorry, right hand down to the mat for standing split. Go ahead and rise up to standing, bending the left knee. Maybe you take a couple steps in between. So the left foot is behind the left glute, and then grabbing the inside of that left foot with the left hand, moving into dancer pose. So you might start with that right hand reaching up towards the sky, and then exhale as you 
lower the right hand, leaning forward, pressing the left foot into the hand. So creating this balance of forces. The left foot presses into the left hand, the right fingers reach forward, slight back bend. You might hold on to a piece of furniture for balance, no big deal, you're at your own house, so do whatever you want. And then find your focal point. Breathing into it. Finding your strength. Remembering your power. Remembering your light. And then go ahead and slowly lower the foot back down. Breathing here in mountain pose. Tadasana. Inhale to circle the arms up to the sky. Exhaling the hands down through heart center and down to our sides. Inhaling to lift the arms back around and up. Exhale, forward fold, wash it away. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, step walk or jump the feet back. Option to move through that vinyasa or skip it and take downward dog. Breathing. On an inhale, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Exhale, bends the left knee, stacks the hips to twist open. Inhale, straightens the left leg, squares off the hips. Exhale, knee to nose, curl it in. Inhale, lifts the left leg. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale to lift the left leg. Exhale, left knee, right elbow, cross the body. Inhale to lift. Exhale to step the left foot between the hands. Inhale, warrior two, rise up. Adjust your stance as needed. Reaching forward, flip the palm, exhale. Reverse warrior, reaching straight up to the left fingertips, opening up that left side body. Exhale, lower the left forearm down to the left thigh or down to the earth. Inhaling here for side angle. Exhaling as we circle the right fingertips forward and down. Inhaling as we reach back up, we're moving through the shoulder as we exhale, lowering the fingertips forward and down. Inhaling up. Last round, exhale, circling down towards the earth. Inhaling, reaching the fingertips up and then coming through center, warrior two. Inhaling to reach the arms up, straightening through the left leg. Exhaling to side bend to the right, stretching through that left side body for sky archer pose. Exhaling as we release the hands, reaching the left fingertips forward, skewing the hips. Exhale, triangle pose, tilting down, reaching the right fingertips either straight up to the sky or forward, dropping the bicep to the ear. Keeping the chest open, micro bend in the knees, and on an inhale, rising all the way back up to warrior two. Exhale, the cartwheel of the hands to surround the left foot. Inhale to lift the left hand up to the sky, dragonfly twist. This time, shifting all of our weight forward and then lifting that right foot. Gazes up at the left fingertips. Pressing back through the right heel. And then when you're ready, lowering the left hand for standing split. Rising up, bending the right knee, bringing the right foot towards the right glute. And then Grabbing that right foot with the right hand, shifting into dancer pose, left fingertips reaching up towards the sky. And as we lean forward, pressing that right foot into the right hand, gazes past the left fingertips. Breathing here, rooting down through that left foot. Maybe you grab onto something for balance. And holding here for three more breaths. Feeling your strength. Feeling the heat. 
inviting it all in. And when you're ready, releasing the right foot back down to the mat. Feeling the change, feeling the blood flowing back down towards the earth in mountain pose. Inhaling to circle the arms back up to the sky. On an exhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Bringing the weight to the ball mounds of the feet. Lifting through the heels. Exhaling as we sink the hips down towards the heels. Option to stay in a yogi squat, whatever version of that, whether it's here or with the feet separated and the soles planted and the hands at heart center. Or option to take um, crow pose, where we start with the feet together and shift the weight from our knees onto the biceps towards the armpits. Playing with whatever version. And if you're in crow pose, maybe you consider shooting the feet back for chaturanga. If you're in a yogi squat, maybe you bring the feet back together and step the feet back. Otherwise, option to move through that vinyasa flow. Or maybe you just skip it and take a rest. When you're ready, right leg lifts, three-legged dog. Exhale, bends the knee, stacks the hips to twist open. Inhale to straighten the knee, square off the hips. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale to lift the right leg. Exhale, right knee, right elbow. Inhale to lift. Exhale, right knee, left elbow. Inhale to lift. And on an exhale, let's Plant the right foot on the outside of the right hand. So it's on just the edge of the right side of the mat. And we're preparing for lizard pose. So maybe if this is really intense for you here, you can shorten your stance or you can lower the left knee down to the mat. Maybe you use a chair to rest your forearms onto. All right. Some of you might have the availability to lower the forearms down to the mat. And then if it feels good to let this right knee splay out to the right side, you can. Obviously don't force anything. And so settling in wherever you're at. Feeling the discomfort, the vulnerability of it all and knowing that Part of being strong is having the ability to sit with these types of feelings. Knowing that sometimes when things are beyond our control, we have no choice but to sit with it and to control our reactions to it. And so see where the mind goes. How, how does the body react when it's put in this stressful situation where there's tension occurring? And see if you can be with that tension without necessarily reacting to it. Unless, of course, it's the pose is becoming too intense or you're in pain, then obviously back off. Using your best judgment and listening to your unique body. Maybe rocking forwards and backwards through the left toes. Maybe in a circular motion. And then when you're ready, Come up onto the hands if you're not already there. And then step that right foot back to make the left and downward dog. If you need to take any counter poses, um, feel free to do that here. And then when you're ready, left leg lifts, three-legged dog. Exhale, bends the knee, stacks the hips to twist open. Inhale, straightens the left leg, squares off the hips. Exhale, knee to nose, curl it in, rock the shoulders forward. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, left knee, right elbow comes across the body. 
Inhale, lifts the left leg. Exhale, steps the left foot to the outer edge of the left hand, so on the left edge of the mat. And then this is a different side. So see where you wanna go on this side, where the body should go on this side. Listening to those boundaries and those limitations. So whether it's using a chair under the forearms or under the arms, or dropping the forearms down to the mat. Whatever it is, moving into it slowly and with ease. You don't have to rush into it, there's no hurry. Taking your time to settle in. Finding any sort of rocking or movement in this pose that feels good to you. Or perhaps you choose stillness. And even though the pose might become tough, we're stronger than we give ourselves credit for. Our minds might be telling us to give up, but our bodies are strong. Reclaiming your power here. And then once you feel balanced on this side, go ahead and step the left foot back to meet the right. Take any counter pose you might need. From there, dropping the knees down to the mat. Sinking the hips back to the heels for child's pose. Bringing the arms next to our sides, allowing the shoulders to just drape over the knees. Maybe we rest one temple down to the mat. Breathing. Right hand grabs onto the right foot or right ankle. On an inhale, lift the left hand up to the sky for twisted camel. We'll move into a sort of dancing camel here. So bringing that left hand around and walking the hands forward through a full child's pose. And then bringing the left hand over to the left heel or ankle. Inhaling to lift the right hand up to the sky. Twisted camel. And then just find your own dance here. Moving through child's pose. Inhaling for a twisted camel. Exhaling as we crawl through child's pose. Inhaling, twisted camel. Let's do one more round on each side. Crawling through child's pose. Inhaling, twisted camel. Exhaling, crawl through child's pose. Inhale, lift the hips, lift the right, right hand. Exhale, come through child's pose. This time, lifting the chest up for hero's pose. Sinking one hip down to the mat and sweeping the feet out in front. Planting the hands behind you. Either planting the soles of the feet or keeping the legs long. We'll lift the hips up either for incline plank or for reverse tabletop. Just allowing the head to stay with the natural curvature of the spine or if it feels comfortable in your body to create a shelf with the shoulders and let the head hang back, you can do that as well. Exhaling to lower the hips back down to the mat. Bring the soles of the feet together for Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose, round angle pose. Maybe you use a prop or something here. Got your pillow handy. And you might just place your prop, I don't know, on the lap or something. Inhaling as we lift the arms up and exhaling as we fold forward. And so the prop is nice here because it creates a cushion so that we can rest our head on something and we don't have to worry about trying to reach our feet or reach the ground. This can be enough. Maybe you allow the head and neck to release down, create some rounding. 
The head weighs, what, like 10 pounds, so that's quite a bit of weight to bring the body closer down towards the ear. Every inhale lengthens the spine, every exhale sinks in a little deeper. Inhale, slowly roll back up to seated. Move your props away. Bring the legs and the knees together. Balancing on the sit bones. Maybe the hands are on the shins for support here. Maybe the arms are reaching up towards the sky. And then gently begin to lift through the chest. Maybe you begin to lift the feet for boat pose. Keeping the spine tall, crown of the head lifted. And then focusing on balancing on the sit bones and then consider lifting the shins higher. Feeling it in the lower abdomen, that's where you can feel the sensation. And on an exhale, slowly lower all the way down to your back. Bring the right knee into the chest and cross it over to the left for spinal twist. The right arm comes out long, the gaze is over at the right fingertips. Let gravity do the work. Inhale the right knee back in towards the body and then straighten it back down against the mat. Left knee comes in towards the chest, cross it over to the right side with the right hand. Shoulder blades stay flat against the mat and the gaze looks over at the left fingertips. You can imagine that we're wringing out our body, letting go of whatever doesn't serve us anymore. Inhaling the knee back through center and then along against the mat. Take any last poses that you need to in order to make your practice feel complete. So if you feel like you still need some more movement, maybe a shoulder stand or happy baby pose or a bridge, feel free to take that. Otherwise, we'll just take rest. Final relaxation, Shavasana. allowing the body to grow heavy, allowing all the muscles to release. We scan the body from head to toe, focusing on every body part as we go along and relaxing into each individual part until the whole body becomes relaxed, melting down into the mat, down into the earth. Letting go of any remaining thoughts, any remaining tension. Feeling the prana, that life force energy, swirling around and settling into the body. This is where everything that we've practiced begins to manifest, so do not skip out on Shavasana. fingers and toes, moving the head and neck side to side, bringing the knees in towards the chest, curling up into a tiny ball, like a seed ready for growth, to evolve and change. Make 
your way to a seated position in any way that makes sense to you. Sitting up nice and tall, shoulders rolling back and down, crown of the head is lifted. Inhale to circle the arms around and up to the sky, surrounding yourself with positive energy, meeting the palms at the top and then exhaling to seal that energy in through heart center. Chin bows in gratitude, grateful just to be in this body and to have this strength. The light in me sees the light that shines in all of you. Where those lights meet is where we find connection and that connection is the meaning of the word yoga. Thank you all for sharing this practice with me today. Namaste.